Hi, I'm Jonathan Oxer, and this is Superhouse. It's a long time since I've shown you the home automation switchboards in my house, and not much has changed in them in quite a while. But something exciting has just happened. Altico Robotics has just announced a new Shelly, and it's possibly going to make me rewire my switchboard. So, to understand why, you need to understand how houses are wired up traditionally and then for home automation. Traditional house wiring brings power in the form of active and neutral from the switchboard via a switch to the load, which could be a light in the house in this example. The switch interrupts the active side of the connection and allows power to flow through the circuit or not, depending on whether it's turned on or not. In retrofitted home automation systems, it's really common to use something like a Sonoff or a Shelly and connect it into the active and neutral line so that it can control power to the load. Then the original switch can either be used as an input to the device or it can be deleted altogether and just control it from your smartphone or whatever else you use for your home automation system. Alternatively, the switch itself can be replaced with a smart switch which includes the load switching and has a control surface. That way you have manual control over it using your hand on the control surface or it can be controlled from the home automation system. But to do that, you typically need a neutral connection through to the light switch location, although some smart light switches do manage to get around that. But these approaches have really big limitations. They are totally dependent on Wi-Fi. If your Wi-Fi is not working, then you can't control things in your house. So if you talk to a professional home automation installer, there is no way that they would do this as a method of choice. It's really something that you do as a retrofit when you've got no other option. Professionally installed home automation systems typically use a star topology. Instead of using load switching through switches on the wall, what they do is run loads back to a central location, like the switchboard or a home automation subboard, and then use that to control the loads. That's exactly how my house is wired up. Power comes in from the street to the main switchboard. From there it's distributed to two sub switchboards. Each of those switchboards contains relays which are mounted on DIN rails and they go out to control the loads. That way the control inputs, which could be from a smartphone or it could be from a control surface like a, uh, a panel on the wall or a, a switch, aren't directly controlling the load. They are sending commands to the home automation system which in turn turns the loads on and off. Here in Australia the dominant professional home automation system is Clipsal CBUS and it works in exactly that way with a star topology. Inside the automation switchboard there are modules which typically are either a relay output or a dimmer output and the loads are wired back to them. And then the automation system can send commands to those modules to turn the loads on and off. But it's not really very DIY friendly and it's very close source with, and expensive. So with Clips or CBUS it ha obviously has to be installed by a professional electrician and you can't really change anything. A lot of the time the installers will install the system and lock it. And that's partly for your own protection because what they are used to is customers who will get in and mess around with things, screw up the settings, and then they've got to come back and fix it. So obviously they don't want that happening. But what it means is that if you are a, a, a very tech savvy homeowner and you want to modify your home automation system, change some of the programming, a lot of the time you can't do that. So in my own switchboard, what you can see here are DIN rail mounted relays. These are mains rated relays that have been mounted inside the switchboard and all of the loads are wired back to them. For years now, those relays have been controlled by this temporary bodge, which is basically an Arduino with an ethernet connection, which is firing the relays, telling them when to turn loads on and off. I've had this system in place for years now, even though it was ever, only ever intended to be temporary, because I've been waiting for a product to come along that would solve this problem. And now thanks to Altico, it has. The device I'm really excited about is the Shelly Pro 4PM. It's a DIN rail mounted four channel relay device, but the really killer feature for it is that it has built in ethernet. And the firmware that comes with it has MQTT support out of the box. So, and it's got power monitoring, that's what the PM stands for. So the really cool thing is that I could use the Shelly Pro 4PM and replace my relays in here and then I don't need this control system at all. I can just connect it all up to Ethernet, send uh, commands via MQTT, and control all the loads in my switchboard. So let's check out the device and see what it can do. Now straight out of the box, it's this really cool looking black device. 
You can see there's a screen on the top, some menu buttons, screw terminals on the top edge, and screw terminals on the bottom edge, along with an Ethernet connection. Now one thing that tripped me up the first time uh, was that it looks like you need to pop out the plastic on these little screw terminals here because you need to be able to get a screwdriver in, but you don't. These covers just clip off. So all you do is clip that off and it exposes the terminals here. Same thing happens on the bottom. So what you can do is make your connections and then because these are slots, they just slide back in and cover all the terminals up. It's all very neat. Now the whole thing is designed to, to go onto a DIN rail. And uh, these are really common here in Australia. In fact, pretty much every switchboard in Australia has DIN rail in it. It's just a standard thing. Now I don't think this is so common in places like the US. I think over there this is mainly used for industrial sort of systems. But uh, if you can get a switchboard set up with DIN rail in it, it's really handy. Because what you can do is just clip modules onto it. And this is what this is designed to do. You can see it's got these two little tabs on the back here and then a clip on the bottom. So all you do is you hook the top of the module over the DIN rail, push it down and it snaps into place. And now it's firmly fixed. So the DIN rail is mounted vertically on the back of the switchboard or the cabinet and then modules clip into it like this. You can have a row of modules all side by side. When you want to get them off again, there is a little tab on the bottom. So typically you'll use something like a screwdriver, just pop the tab a bit and it unclips as easy as that. So what I'm going to do is connect up a lamp. I have uh, this test lamp here, which I've been using for Sonoffs and Shelleys and things over the years. I'm going to connect this up and I have power here. This is not actually connected at the other end right now. But what we're going to do is simulate having this mounted inside a switchboard bring power in just like it would be available in the switchboard and then control the load and see how this behaves. Okay, I've got all the connections in place. Now there's no power on this yet, it's all just connected but nothing alive. So earth is not needed by this, so the earth connection is just passed straight through to the load. It's not actually really going anywhere. Neutral comes through here and is also passed through to the load and there is a neutral connection through to the Shelly. It needs that for its own power because it's powered by the mains connection. Then we have active coming in, and active comes into the L1 input on here for live one. And all of these live inputs are tied together internally. So we've connected it to live one, but it didn't actually matter which one. And then O1, which is output one, is the live that is going back out to the load. So now all we need to do is pop the covers back on, and we can apply power. But first, what I'm going to do is grab myself an Ethernet cable. This is connected to an Ethernet switch at my workbench. And I'm going to plug that in so that when it powers up, it's going to have access to Ethernet. Now I'm going to slide myself away over here, and plug in power, and turn it on. So now it'll be starting up. And in fact, oh, you can see on the screen it says Shelly 4 Pro. So it's showing us the boot process. Now it's come up with the four output channels. It says off for all four channels. And on here you can see that there is activity on the ethernet. So right now it'll be connecting to the network. And in fact, there is a status display up in the top right, which also shows that it's connected to the ethernet. Now you can see that it's showing the four different channels on here. It says off on all four of them. And we can use these menu buttons to select it. So if we go down once, it'll select the first channel, press OK, it turns it on. So you can see that the light is now being powered through the Shelly. You can also see that it's reporting about 56 watts being used by that at the moment. So if I come back down, I can press OK and turn the load back off. So we have total local control with no network connection or anything else required, which is really handy when you're doing setup and debugging. You can control it all through here. But if you hold down the OK button, it gives us some menu options. There's network setup and status. I'm going to come into status and it gives us some information. So it's running its own access point at the moment. And it's also connected to Ethernet and it tells me what its IP address is. So what we can do now with this all connected is slide on over to my computer, open a web browser and go to the IP address that it's displayed and see if we can get some data off this and control it. 
simply opening a web browser on the same network and going to the IP address that was displayed on the LCD, we get this interface. And it's very simple to use. Basically, you just click on a channel, and as you can see, we can turn them on and off. We're getting the power reported in here, and there are configuration options. So in the device, you can do firmware upgrades and all the usual sorts of things. And in networks, we can set up how it's going to connect. Under Wi-Fi, you can have it connect to two different Wi-Fi networks. I don't have it connected to any Wi-Fi at the moment. You can have it run as an access point. I actually don't want it to be an access point, so I'm going to turn that off. And then we will go into Ethernet, and you can see that Ethernet is turned on. It's reporting its own IP address. You can set a static IP if you like. Under Cloud, you can connect it to the Shelly Cloud if you want to use their service for remote control but it's not enabled by default, which is nice. That means when you start this up, it's a fully locally controlled device. It's not dependent on anything external to work. Now there is Bluetooth, which is turned on by default, and MQTT. I've already configured this with the IP address of my test MQTT broker. It doesn't have any authentication or anything, I just use this one for doing test setups. And it also supports MQTTS if you are running an SSL certificate on your broker. So that means we can now use MQTT messages to both control and read data from the Shelly Pro 4PM. Let's do some tests here with my test MQTT broker. So you can see that the topic here is set based on the ID of the device. Each one has its own unique ID. And then the message is a bit of JSON. So we're sending an ID, a source, a method is switch.set, and params ID zero, so this is channel zero, and we want to set on is true. So if we make that publication, you can see that the channel turns on. Now I'll turn on to false, and now we can turn it off. So with MQTT, we can now control those channels. And if I did ID one and set it to true, we would turn on the second output because it's counting zero, one, two, and three. Now we can also read data from it. What we're doing here with this subscription is reading from the events topic so I'll do that subscription. And I'll slide over and manually set the uh, output to on. So I've selected first output, press on, and you can see the events that have appeared that were published to MQTT by the Shelly. So we can also get information like whether loads have been turned on or off and how much power. You can see there is an A power value there, which is showing the uh, number of watts that is being used by the load. And that's how easy it is to connect the Shelly Pro 4PM to an MQTT broker and then be able to control it. Keep in mind that what I've shown you so far, all I have done, the only change I've made to the configuration is putting in the IP address of my broker. Everything else is just left as it was. So what you're seeing here is the out of the box experience. Connecting power to it, connecting a load, it gets its IP address off the network, you go to the IP address, put in your MQTT broker, and now you can control it. This is really, really cool. And now that this is talking MQTT, it's going to be a very small amount of extra effort to link this into my home automation system using Node-RED and be able to control it from my phone. So let's give that a go. What you can see here is a Node-RED dashboard object, which is just a switch. And then there is a switch node, which sends one of two messages depending on whether it's turning on or off. The on message is just what we saw before. It's just got on equals true. The off message is on is false. And all we're doing is publishing that to the topic that the Shelly is listening to. And that's it. That's really all there is to it. So now if I grab my phone and I go into the Node Red dashboard, I've got the Shelly 4 Pro PM object on there. Just hit the switch and now I can control it. You can see that the load is being displayed on here and the light is being turned on and off. So out of the box with one configuration change and a little bit of node red, I can now control this device. And now for the big question, which is, would I replace all the relays in my switchboard with the Shelly Pro 4PM? And the answer is a resounding hell yes, but the problem is certification. One of the big issues in Australia is that home automation products and all electrical products have to meet very strict certification criteria and it's expensive to achieve. So a lot of devices like Sonoffs aren't certified in Australia. But Ultico have told me 
that they are going to seek Australian and New Zealand certification for this. And if they achieve it, I'm going to buy about a dozen of them immediately. If I put eight of them in this switchboard, it would replace all of those relays. It would take up less space. The controller would go away. I would have power monitoring on every load. And I would have status displays and even local control by pressing buttons on here. So, I mean, it's a no-brainer. Definitely worth doing. So, if you are wiring a house from scratch, setting it up for home automation, and you want a star topology control system like mine, then I think this is a really, really cool product. I wholeheartedly recommend it. So, I'm going to be back soon with another video, but in the meantime, go and build something awesome.